only thing we have to fear is in war. Fear there is no substitute for victory. Let us never negotiate out of fear. We stand undivided, forever united, fighting hand in hand for the liberty we burn, for glory and honor for our sons and daughters. Ever mindful of the lessons we've learned, let the torch of freedom burn. Welcome to the intersection of faith and politics. This is Wall Builders Live with David Barton and Rick Green. You can find us online at our websites. There's wallbuilders.com. That's our main website. You can go there. If you're a pastor, you can find out about our pastor's briefings throughout the year. If you're interested in having a Wall Builders speaker, you can click on the link there for booking a speaker and having a Wall Builders presentation come to your community. If you'd just like some great information, there are a wealth of articles right there on the website that you can download uh, there's great news on the uh, homepage of the website. And then if you'd like to get some of the great materials that Wall Builders has put out over the years, educating folks about the Founding Fathers, it's all available there at wallbuilders.com. Then there's also wallbuilderslive.com. Many of you are actually listening through the website. If you're not listening to one of our 200 stations around the country, perhaps you're listening through our website. And if you've never been to the website, then we encourage you to check it out because you can find out what other stations are carrying the program in your area. And you can also get more information about our archives and past programs. And speaking of those past programs, if you're tuning in today for the first time this week, you're actually tuning into part three of a four-part series. And if you want to listen to part one and part two, you can easily go to wallbuilderslive.com, click on the archives, and get the last couple of days. But here's what the series is about. It's called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. And this is, is actually a program that we recorded uh, part of it in the Wall Builders Library, where all the original documents are, and we're able to pull those things off the shelf and actually show them to you and talk about them and walk through them. And David shares so much information there about the foundations of America. And then the other part of the program is recorded in Philadelphia at Independence Hall in the very room where the Constitution was framed, in the very room where the Declaration was signed. And the reason we did that, we wanted to take you back to the original history. And so Constitution Alive is about bringing back the foundation. It's about restoring those original principles upon which our nation was built. When we say Constitution Alive, we're not talking about that living, breathing document some of the justices like to use in order to morph the Constitution to what they want it to be. It's not something that should be, as Jefferson said, wax in their hands. The Constitution is alive today because it's not a dead document. The, the things that they said and that they put into our Constitution, the principles that they founded the country upon, are just as applicable today. They're just as strong today. They're just as true today. And that's what we bring you in Constitution Alive. We bring that truth back. We show where we really came from as a nation, and we give you specific tools on how to be a part of saving our nation and restoring our constitutional republic. So without any further ado, let's pick up where we left off yesterday with Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. Hall is trying to talk uh, Captain Hale out of this. He said, you, you're never going to succeed at this. There, there, there's no way you'll accomplish the mission. He said, first of all, he said, Hale, you're, you're too honest. <laughs> there's no way you're going to be a good spy. You can't lie. You, you, you're going to fail in the mission. Secondly, this is an impossible mission. You're talking, there, there's no way you're going to achieve. And even, he said, even if you succeed, your reputation is going to be ruined. Your, your, your legacy is ruined. Don't do it. There's no honor in it, he said. Well, Captain Hale said there is honor in any mission necessary for the cause of freedom. I will do my duty. Takes off, dresses once again as a teacher, gets across enemy lines and acts like he's a teacher looking for work. So he, he goes around uh, uh, New York there and, and for about a week he's, he's mapping out the locations uh, of the British troops. And, and he gets all of their, their fortifications, their movements, he gets it all down on paper, stuffs it in his shoe, then he's sneaking back across enemy lines and he's captured. Well, Evidence is right there on his person. There's, there's no denying what he's there for. So literally that night they sentence him to hang the next morning. And so that night he's kind of, he's contemplating his fate. He's saying, look, I failed. I, I failed the mission. I failed the general. I failed the, the, the cause for which I, uh, the cause I love so much. What can I possibly do? Well, he, he asked for a member of the clergy he's denied. He asked for a, a, a Bible he's denied. He, he finally gets a couple of pieces of paper and he's able to write a couple of letters. And as he's writing these letters, he purposes within his heart to do the only thing left that, 
that he can do to help the cause. And so the next morning, they're, they're marching him out, and the crowd has begun to gather to witness the hanging. And they give him a chance to say a few last words, and a lot of different people wrote different things about what he said. Apparently, he gave a pretty long speech. I mean, he, this 21-year-old actually gave an impassioned speech about freedom, about what the American cause of liberty was all about. And and, and he's reaching back into kind of the days of college where he was a, actually a great orator, and he's reaching back into the rhetoric and some of the things that he had read then, including right here, Joseph Addison's Cato had been a, a big influence on Washington and the others, and, and, and Hale had read that in college. And so here he is, he's giving this speech, and these, these British soldiers are heckling him. They're, they're mocking him. They're saying, you're wasting your life. They're saying, you're throwing your life away on a worthless cause. You cannot succeed. You're wasting your life. And then, of course, Nathan Hale said those words that we've heard over and over and over again. He said, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. Hey guys, this is Tim Barton with Wall Builders. And I know you hear my dad and Rick talk a lot about our founding fathers, about the original intent of our nation, the constitutional heritage that we have. And really we've seen how far we've slipped away from that. And I know a lot of us, as we hear my dad and Rick talk, think I wish there was a place that I could go and I could see these documents and I could read and learn about the founding fathers firsthand, see the things they did. And I wanna give you some websites today that can help you accomplish that very thing. If you get online, you can go to places like Library of Congress and you can look under their century of lawmaking or historical documents. You can go to the Avalon Project, to the Founders Constitution, to Google Books, or even the Internet Archives, or you can just go to Wall Builders' website. We have a section for our library, and under that section we have different subgroups for historical documents, historical writings, even a place where you can get helpful links to find out more information about other websites where you can do research for yourself and find the truth for yourself. Friends, this is a time that we need to know who we are and where we came from. Wallbuilders.com is a great place to go. One life to give. He accomplished more in that moment than he ever could have with all that, all that uh, intelligence he was bringing back because those words would be repeated over and over again among the American ranks. They would encourage those that were thinking about uh, not re-upping to re-up and stay in. They encouraged others to, to get in and fight. And for generations, we've used those words to inspire generations to be willing to give of themselves for others, sometimes to pay the ultimate price in sacrifice. One life to give. We all have but, but one life to give, don't we? That's all we get. The question is, for what will we give our one life? We're blessed in America that every generation, it seems, there's, there's enough that are willing to, to be involved, to participate, to sacrifice. Not, not just give their life on the battlefield, which is huge, of course, but also to live their life and live out the freedom that the others paid for. And, and as I think back to these guys in this room, to Nathan Hale and those throughout the Revolutionary Period, fast forward to even now, guys like, like Michael Murphy, the Navy SEAL that received the Medal of Honor after giving his life and so many of these guys, and really when you look back over America's history, you think about all of those that sacrificed, the millions that served, 1.2 million that gave it all, that gave their one life for you, for me, for us to be able to enjoy this room tonight. You know, the, the, the good book says that there's no greater love that any man has than that he lay down his life for his friends, for, in this case, for his, for his country. And those that serve in our military and in and, and, and our first responders and, and, and on the front lines here in America as well, they are willing to give their one life for us. And I, I think about that book that uh, James Bradley wrote about his dad, The Flags of Our Fathers, from Iwo Jima. My wife, uh, her grandfather, I got a purple heart at Iwo Jima, and, and, and it really struck me when he talked about that makeshift monument there at Iwo Jima. It said, when you go home, tell them for us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. We gave our one life so you could be free. I don't know about you, but I've always struggled with how to honor those that came before me. 
I've always struggled with how to obey the, the biblical command that says, render honor unto whom honor is due. But I think those that, that sacrifice and uh, that, that give of themselves for us, they deserve our honor. But I've always wondered how. How do you, how, I mean, you know, when I, when I meet a veteran, I always say thank you for your service, but it seems so, so empty. It seems like I'm not, I mean, what, how do I honor that they were willing to give their life for me? And I had kind of a, an epiphany moment, if you will, when I was sitting in a movie theater Several years ago, you might have saw the movie. You remember the movie Saving Private Ryan? How many of y'all saw that, that movie, Saving Private Ryan? You remember the, the storyline, right? This kid has, has lost all his brothers. He's 19 years old. His brothers have all been killed in action. The Army figures this out. They want to get him out of the theater and get him home. Uh, this was the policy after the Sullivan brothers, the actual true story. And so they're trying to get him home to his family as the last surviving son, but um, they can't find him. And, and, and so Tom Hanks' character is a guy named Captain Miller, and his job is to get in there with his team, find a Private Ryan, 19-year-old Ryan, and get him home to his family. And so the movie, throughout the movie, these guys on, on Captain Miller's team keep getting knocked off. They're, they're giving their lives. They're sacrificing their lives for this one kid, Private Ryan. And so throughout the movie, the, the, you keep seeing all these guys sacrifice their lives. And then at the end of the movie, Captain Miller finds Private Ryan. They're just about to get him out, and Captain Miller gets shot. He dies. But just before he dies, he, he grabs this kid, this 19-year-old that they had all given their lives for. He pulls him in real close. And he said two words, not just to Private Ryan, I think to every one of us in this room, all of you at home watching. He said, earn this. Earn this. They had given their lives for him, and they're saying to him, earn the freedom that we've sacrificed for. And only as Hollywood can do it, they, they morphed from that, that young 19-year-old Private Ryan to 50 or 60 years later, an elderly Private Ryan has come back, and, and he's visiting the grave of Captain Miller. And I remember him kneeling down, and, and he said to Captain Miller, he said, tell me I've lived a good life. Tell me I've lived a life worthy of the sacrifice that you made for me. Earn this. I think it's time for us to earn the freedom. Some of you that have joined me tonight, you put your lives on the line. You sacrificed for my freedom. You were willing to give your life. Many that are at home watching, willing to do that. We want to earn the freedom that we've been given. How do we do that? I think Abraham Lincoln probably said it better than anybody. He said, it is from these honored dead that we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. And the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. He's saying the way we, we honor those that came before us is we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. The cause that started right here in this room. The cause of liberty, the cause of, of freedom. We increase our devotion to that cause. That's how we honor what they did for us. And that's why we're here tonight. We're here to honor them and to say, look, they gave their one life for us. What can we do? What can we as citizens do? How do we give our lives, live our lives, if you will, in a way that honors the sacrifice that came before us. Well, we start right here by saying, what was it that these guys put together? What, what was this secret sauce, this formula that made our nation so free and, and so successful? And then what's our job? Hey friends, if you've been listening to Wall Builders Live for very long at all, you know how much we respect our veterans and how appreciative we are of the sacrifice they make to make our freedoms possible. One of the ways that we love to honor those veterans is to tell their stories here on Wall Builders Live. Once in a while we get an opportunity to interview veterans that have served on those front lines, that have made incredible sacrifices, have amazing stories that we wanna share with the American people. One of the very special things we get to do is interview World War II veterans. You've heard those interviews here on Wall Builders Live from folks that were in the Band of Brothers to folks like Edgar Harrell that survived the Indianapolis to so many other great stories you've heard on Wall Builders Live. You have friends and family that also serve. If you have World War II veterans in your family that you would like to have their story shared here on Wall Builders Live, please email us at radio at wallbuilders.com, radio at wallbuilders.com. Give us a brief summary of the story and we'll set up an interview. Thanks so much for sharing here on Wall Builders Live. Let the torch of freedom burn. What can we do 
to help preserve it for future generations. I, I don't want you to, to leave this class saying, oh, that was kind of neat. You know, we got to come in and, and see where it all began. Or, you know, we learned some stories about the founders we didn't know and, and then go home and forget about it. I don't want anybody watching these DVDs and just saying, okay, that was kind of neat. We, we did that in our, in our living room, our Sunday school class, or wherever we watched it, and then go home. No, no. I want, I, my prayer is that you guys and, and ladies leave tonight, that, that, that those watching at home and those on the webinar tonight, that when this is over, you have a burden. I want you to have a sense of responsibility that it is up to you to preserve this freedom for the next generation. In fact, I, I'm going to make a statement to you that you may think is a little bit overblown. My, my wife would probably say it's cheesy. She calls me the king of Elvita sometimes. She just thinks I'm cheesy sometimes. But I think, it's, I think it's absolutely true. It's this. The fate of the free world depends on you. Fate of the free world depends on you. Now, you might say, all right, that's, you know, you're exaggerating. That's overblown. How many of you would agree the fate of the free world depends on America? Would you agree with me on that? How many of you understand that the, that the fate of America depends upon her constitutional principles being upheld and preserved and, and protected. And how many would, would agree that the fate of her constitutional principles being upheld and preserved and protected depends upon the first three words of the Constitution, which is what? We the people. So, so if the fate of the free world depends on America, if America depends upon our constitutional principles, if our constitutional principles depend upon we the people, then friends, the fate of the free world depends on you. And so we're here to, to challenge ourselves to dig deep into that, these documents to say, okay, what's my job? What, what do I go do as a citizen to preserve freedom? And I, I tell you, I'm seeing more of this than I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I've been doing this for 15 years, but I've never seen the level of activity in our nation. I, I've never seen so many people coming out to say, hey, I want to learn about the Founding Fathers. I, I want to know what freedom's all about. I, I want to know what the Constitution said. How many of you seen all these bumper stickers? How many driven by a car and seen a bumper sticker that said, read the Constitution? Anybody seen one of those? Okay, a guy like me, I see that bumper sticker, I'm honking. Okay, I'm sorry. I just, I get excited when I see that. But, but we've all said that for years. Read the Constitution. Everybody needs to read the Constitution. But we, we don't usually do it. Most people never actually pick it up. I didn't. I went through law school and was a legislator. I didn't read through the Constitution back then. In fact, I'll tell you what, what really got me fired up about actually studying the founding documents. I, I, I was sitting in my, my Capitol office back in Austin, Texas, back when I was a legislator. And, and, and I'm sitting in my office and I'm, I, I'm reading this poll. And the poll says... It was a Texas poll, so if you're not from Texas, you don't have to feel bad about this poll, but I'm betting your numbers in your state weren't even better, any better. Here's what the poll said. The poll said that half of Texans, half, could not name one freedom out of the First Amendment. Not even one. There's five there that we love, we hold dear, we cherish, we'd fight for, we'd die for. Half of Texans couldn't even name one of them. 95% could not name two of the five. I was appalled. Then I tried to name them. <laughs> then it was me. I couldn't name them. And I thought, wow, I'm a legislator. I'm a lawyer. I'm a political junkie, man. I live, breathe, and eat this stuff. I'm doing it all. And I couldn't name them. I thought, what a shame. If I don't know what my freedoms are, if I don't know where they are, how am I going to defend it? How am I going to teach my kids these things if, if I don't know myself? So that actually spurred a piece of legislation I did back then called the Celebrate Freedom Week. And, and what it did, we actually numbered it to House Bill 1776. I just love saying that in this room. I don't know why. It was, it was, so we, so we, I had to stand in line to be able to get that number for the bill. So House Bill 1776. And, and what it did was it said every kid in Texas has to spend time studying these guys, studying the, the Declaration and the Constitution, studying the, the men that gave them, to, studying the ideas that went behind them, and, and studying our military, and studying the sacrifices made. And, and we're not going to just gloss over it once in fifth or eleventh grade and forget about it. We're going to teach it every single year so that we can pound it into the minds of our young people, so we can put it in their hearts and their souls, so that they'll appreciate the freedom they've been given, and they'll be able to defend and protect it for future generations. So we, we passed that bill, and, and now we've got several other states that, that have passed it. We've got a, an effort happening all across the nation. If, if you're at home tonight uh, watching on the, on the webinar, you're watching this DVD, go to my website at rickgreen.com and click on Celebrate Freedom Week and pull up the page there, and it'll tell you what's happening in your state. You can click on your state, and it'll tell you the action steps you can take to help make this happen in your home state. It's a great way to make sure every kid's studying these wonderful documents that came out of this room right here. Can you, can you imagine how much better our country would be if every kid in America was studying the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution? I mean, just imagine every single year. I, I, I hope you'll help us make it happen. Be sure and 
take that down as one of your action steps, hopefully, after this class is over. So let me, let me kind of just give you a quick overview of our purpose here and, our, and kind of the approach that we're going to take, because this is going to be a little bit different than maybe some courses that you have taken or that you're considering taking in the future. I love reading John Jay. I love this quote that, that he gave us. Jay's, of course, our first Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, but he's also one of the three guys that did the Federalist Papers. So he, he did sort of the instruction manual for us to kind of understand what these guys were doing, he and two other guys, Madison and, and Hamilton. But, but Jay gave us a little bit of a warning, and if you would, this quote here, follow me on this quote, because this is going to sort of guide everything we do throughout this class. This is our goal to accomplish what John Jay told us. He said that every member of the state, and let me just stop right there, because that means I can't get off the hook by saying I'm not a, a, a teacher or a preacher or, or whoever else might be. That means all of us, right? Every single citizen. That means young and old. That means all of us, every member of the state, ought diligently to read and to study. So not just read the Constitution, but to study the Constitution. Why? He tells us. So that we can teach the rising generation to be free. So we can pass the torch intact to the next generation. And then he tells us, so that we'll know our rights and we'll sooner perceive when they've been violated and we'll be the better prepared to defend and assert them. That's our goal. Have you ever wanted to learn more about the United States Constitution but just felt like, man, the classes are boring? or it's just that old language from 200 years ago, or I don't know where to start. People want to know, but it gets frustrating because you don't know where to look for truth about the Constitution either. Well, we've got a special program for you available now called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green, and it's actually a teaching done on the Constitution at Independence Hall in the very room where the Constitution was framed. We take you both to Philadelphia, the Cradle of Liberty and Independence Hall, and to the Wall Builders Library, where David Barton brings the history to life to teach the original intent of our founding fathers. We call it the Quick Start Guide to the Constitution because in just a few hours through these videos, you will learn the Citizen's Guide to America's Constitution. You'll learn what you need to do to help save our constitutional republic. It's fun, it's entertaining, and it's going to inspire you to do your part to preserve freedom for future generations. It's called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. You can find out more information on our website now at wallbuilders.com. To know our rights, perceive when they've been violated, and be the better prepared to defend and assert them in a constitutional, peaceable way. That's one of the most important things of what we want to do in this class is say, okay, if we see something going wrong in our government or in our constitution, we don't want anarchy, we don't want violence, we don't want any of those. The, the, the document actually gives us the tools, it gives us the means to peaceably participate in our government so that we can save that government and save that freedom for future generations. So that's what we're going to do throughout the, the whole class. And, and our approach, let me just give you three or four kind of set up things about the way we're going to do this. Let me just first say, folks, I'm no guru, okay? I am I'm so blessed to get to work with some guys I think are, are gurus, guys like Ed Meese and, and, and David Barton and other guys like that, Matt Staver. Uh, I get to learn at their feet. And all I'm doing is I'm here with you as a fellow citizen. We're going to sharpen each other's countenance tonight. We're, we're going to help each other open these documents and study them. So you, we'll have questions all night. Feel free to ask questions. We'll, we'll probably do them at the end of each section. You're going to stump me before the night's over and it'll be fun. All right, we, let's just have a good time together learning to be better citizens. And, and the other thing about the class, we're not an exhaustive study. This is not a, a year-long uh, program. In fact, the best analogy I know to think of, how many of you ever, ever bought a computer or a, a, a monitor or, or a big TV or something, and it came with a, a quick start guide. <laughs> you know, you know the, 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 the nice glossy thing you could flip out, just because, you know, something like this where, hey, I just want to know where to plug everything in, right? I just want to get this thing working. I don't want to read the, the big, thick manual that came with it. I'm never going to read it. I want the quick start guide so I can make this thing work. That's what we're doing tonight. We're, we're going to do the quick start guide to the Constitution. Why? So that we as citizens can get plugged in, so we can make sure the pieces of our government are properly plugged in and working correctly, and so that we can make corrections on it if we need it. 
the, the, kind of the, if you look at my books back here, these are all the things that I'm, I'm trying to study to be able to do the quick start guide. So these are the big manuals and everything. And I'm, I'm trying, and you guys can help me, distill this thing down to where citizens all over the country. Now you guys have, you've traveled here from all over the nation. So you love this, right? I mean, you're willing to read the big, big manuals, and many of you probably already have. But most people back home aren't going to do it, are they? Well, we're out of time for today, folks. You've been listening to Wall Builders Live, and what we're airing this week is a four-day series called Constitutional Live with David Barton and Rick Green. And it's an opportunity to walk through the entire Constitution and learn a lot of great things about our foundation and how to restore our constitutional republic. More information can be found about the entire program. It's a little over 12 hours of information available to you on DVD and the workbook. You can find out more about that at our website, wallbuilders.com. But if you'd like to listen to the rest of the series, tomorrow will be the conclusion. So if for some reason you tuned in in the middle of the program today, you missed the first two parts to this four-part series, you can go to our website at wallbuilderslive.com, click on the archives, and listen to those first two programs anytime that you like. You can also share them with your friends and family, and we encourage you to do so so that they can get educated about our Constitution as well. And then tomorrow we'll have the conclusion. So it's a four-part series. It's called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. And what we're airing in this four-part series is it's only segment one out of the entire Constitution Alive program, but at least gives you a taste and gives you a chance to start getting educated on these things and to share them with your friends and family. We appreciate you listening today. Join us tomorrow for the conclusion of Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. You've been listening to Wall Builders Live. Stand undivided